Hello, this is Jared and welcome to part two of this tutorial on creating a very simple drawing application in the HTML5 canvas element. So if you'll recall, last time we were at this point where our program would place a dot every time the user clicks and we want to get to this point where we have smooth lines being drawn. So let's, uh, let's have a quick recap of where we were at in code. So we had this very simple markup with our canvas element and then we were hooking up to, to JavaScript just like so. We then added this event listener which would execute a function put point every time it receives a mouse down and that put point function would draw the circle that we wanted. Now there are a couple of things I want to point out about where we left off last time. So firstly, uh, last time I mentioned this thing about the margin zero on the body, which was supposed to get rid of scroll bars, because if we have our canvas the whole width of the browser and then have margin either side, we were going to get scroll bars. And a couple of you may have noticed uh, that we do have scroll bars anyway. So why is that? So by default, a canvas element has a display of inline, so like this. This is the default. And what this means is that it displays in line with the text, but it also means that it has line height. So if you think about uh, lines of text, you have a small margin between the bottom of one line and the top of the other. And that's essentially what we're getting with Canvas. So there's a tiny margin at the bottom, which is what is um, which is what is creating our scroll bars. So if we change this to display block, um, we're just going to do this in the opening tag again like we did in the margin, just for simplicity. If we do that and then refresh, you'll see we get rid of our scroll bars. And that really is something to bear in mind whenever you're working with the canvas, especially if you're going to make it the entire height of the window. The other thing I do want to point out uh, about where we left off last time was this offset x property that we use. This is a property of the event object that we were passed from our event listener. Now the offset x property returns the offset of the event relative to the event target. So in this case the event target is our canvas. And this offset x and the offset y is very useful because you have to use it so often. Well, unfortunately, it's not very well standardized, so Firefox, for example, does not support this property. So instead, we're going to be using the client x and client y properties. The client x and client y properties return the uh, x and y coordinates relative to the actual browser window. The reason they're interchangeable with offset x and y in this case is just because our canvas is set to the width and height of the window. So we can get rid of this line. Okay, so as I say, we want uh, to, instead of be drawing dots, we want to get nice smooth lines. So how can we do that? Well, let's look at this event listener first of all. So at the moment, we're listening for mouse down and putting a point whenever we hear that. But I'm sure a lot of you will know there are many other mouse events that we can listen for. And so I've pulled up this page here from Mozilla Developer Network and I will put a link in the description in case you want to have a look at this. So this is a table of the events that we can capture and here are some mouse events. These are not all the mouse events that we can capture but there are plenty here. So we have mouse down which we've already used which is where the mouse button is pressed down, mouse enter where the cursor is brought onto an element, mouse leave when the cursor is brought off of an element Mouse move is whenever the mouse moves, mouse out when it leaves the, an element or its child. There's many. You can have a look at this yourself. Um, and mouse up, of course, is when the mouse button is brought up. So let's have a look at this mouse move event. If we use mouse move in here, let's see what happens. So if we change this for mouse move, Go back to our browser and refresh. And you'll see we ha are drawing smooth lines. But there are a couple of problems with this. So firstly, if we move at any sort of speed, 
we'll see that these dots are not connected. Um, these are just a lot of dots. And secondly, we're drawing even when the mouse button isn't held down, which is not something that we want. So this is what we're going to solve first, this issue of uh, drawing when the mouse button is not held down. So unfortunately there's no way, no reliable way to check if a mouse button is held down at some particular moment. We can however make one for ourselves. So if we create a variable up here called dragging and set that to false, so this is going to be whether or not our mouse button is held down. So we're going to set this to false to start with. Uh, we're going to assume that when the user loads the page, they're not going to have their mouse button held down. And then we want to set this to true when the mouse is held down and then false again when it's lifted up. So this is where our events table is going to come in handy again. So looks like we're going to want to use mouse down and mouse up. So let's connect to those events. We're going to use event listeners again. So canvas.add event listener. This one's going to be mouse down. And we're going to create a function called engage. Engaga. Yeah, engage. And we'll do the same thing for mouse up. And we'll call that disengage. And let's create those two functions. So var engage equals function. We won't need to take in the event object this time, so we'll leave that empty. And then we'll say dragging equals true. And we'll do the same thing for disengage and set dragging to false. All we need to do now is have put point check if dragging is true and then only execute its code if it is. So all we need to do for that is say if dragging then do this. Very nice, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so now you can see I'm moving my mouse over the canvas and nothing is being drawn when I hold my mouse down, we're getting our dots show up. One thing to point out is that if the user just clicks, then nothing shows up. Um, this might not be what you want, so I'm going to have engage execute put point after it's set the dragging to true. Uh, to do this though, we will need to take in our event object. So we're going to say ee. -E. So our event listener is going to pass in engage the event object as its first parameter, we're going to name it E, and then we're going to pass it on to put point. So now if we look at that, that should, if we just click, that should show up as well. Now we're going to solve this issue of connecting the dots. We'll do this simply by drawing a line between the dot and the previous dot, but how are we going to get that previous point? We could do this by storing the previous point in a variable and then using it that way. Instead, we're going to take advantage of the canvas's way of drawing paths. So let's have a look at that. A path in the canvas is made up of subpaths, and a subpath is just a collection of points joined together by lines. You can see over here we have an example of a path which contains two subpaths, and although those two subpaths are not connected, they're all part of the same path. So let's have a look at how you would go about creating these sorts of paths in code. So if we imagine this grey rectangle here as our canvas, we can see how we'd go about creating the path of a rectangle. So the first function we use is this begin path function. This clears any current path and starts a new one. Next we use context.move to. At this point nothing is drawn, but move to has set us our active point to 10. 10. So let's say this point is here. The next function, line2, then draws a line from that point, 10, 10, to its given point, so 160, 10. So that's drawn a line from here over to here. And then we have the next line going from the previous point again, so 160, 10, down to 160, 130. 
We then have another call to line 2 going from 160, 130 to 10, 130. We then use this function close path, which just returns to the first point in the path. So as you can see, functions often use the last point that was used. So line 2 uses the last point, which here has been defined by move 2. This next line uses the point defined by the previous line 2, and so on. So each of these is setting an active point for the next one to use. Then close path is drawing a line from the current point to the first point, and then marking that subpath as closed before opening a new subpath. Once we have our path, we can do whatever we want to it. So at the moment, nothing will be showing up on our canvas until we say context.stroke or context.fill. And there are other things you can do with that as well, which we'll maybe go into in the future. So as you can see, there are many ways to change the active point. So move to, line to, close path, and a whole lot of others. There is only one way, however, to clear the active point, and that is with begin path. So what does this mean for our program? Well, this means that we can connect to a previous point without having to keep it in a variable. So I'll show you what I mean in the code. So when we execute put point, I'm going to start a path at the end after we've drawn our circle. I'm going to say context.begin path, and then I'm going to use move to and move to our current mouse's position. And then the next time we use put point, I'm going to use line to and use that same point. So now every time we use put point, we're setting up a path, we're opening a path for the next execution of put point. So now we have that path, we can use stroke to add a stroke to that. And let's have a look at what that looks like. So now you can see we have this line connecting all the dots. What we want to do, of course, is make this line the thickness of the dots. So to do this, we're going to use a property of the context called line width, and we're going to set that equal to twice the radius, so radius times 2. So if we save that and have a look, now we have a nice smooth line. We do still have one problem, however, in that because we're leaving a path open every time we use put point, uh, when we click again, we will connect to the previous line. To fix this, we're going to use our disengage function, and we're just going to clear the current path using context.beginPath. So that will get rid of that point that we added at the end of put point. So now, if we look at that, refresh, we should have nice, smooth, disconnected lines. And with that, our drawing application is complete.